Hi, I'm Kathy. Before I dive into my story, please hit the like and subscribe button for more. My days always start before the sun peaks over the horizon. Balancing a full-time job at a bustling office and caring for my four-year-old daughter, Natalie, isn't easy. But it's necessary. I'm the one who keeps our world spinning. Ryan, my husband, he's... different. His idea of contribution is an occasional dishwashing session or picking Natalie from daycare, when he remembers. Our life together, once a partnership, now feels more like a solo act. On a typical morning, I'm bustling in the kitchen. Natalie's chattering a sweet background melody. Mommy, will Daddy take me to the park today? I glance at the clock. It's 7.30 a.m. Ryan is still asleep. Maybe, honey. Let's get you ready for daycare first. The juxtaposition of our lifestyles couldn't be more glaring. By the time I'm halfway through my office work, Ryan might just be considering getting out of bed. It's during one of those rushed mornings that the topic of the new house comes up. Ryan's been dreaming big. A new spacious home. A lawn for Natalie to play on. But dreams cost money. And that's where reality bites. We need to talk about this, Ryan. We can't afford a new house if we keep supporting your mom and sister like this. It's not a new discussion, but it's one that never gets easier. Ryan's always been close to his family, but their financial reliance on us is suffocating. They're my family, Kathy. I can't just cut them off. I'm not saying cut them off completely, Ryan, but we have our own family to think about. Natalie needs more space. We need a home. That evening, as Natalie sleeps and the house is quiet, the conversation resurfaces, more heated this time. Why can't you see how important this is to me, Kathy? My family needs me. And what about us, Ryan? Your daughter and I. Aren't we your family too? We're struggling here, trying to build a future, and you're... I'm what, Kathy? Being a good son and brother? Is that a crime now? His words sting, but I hold my ground. This isn't just about money. It's about responsibility, about being part of a family unit that works together, supports each other. It's not about being a good son, Ryan. It's about being a good husband, a good father. We need to balance our responsibilities. And right now, we're tipping over. The conversation ends with no resolution, as many of our conversations do these days. But something in me shifts that night. I realize that while I can't control Ryan's actions, I can control mine. And I'm determined to make a change. For Natalie. For myself. Our life's in balance. A scale skewed heavily on one side. Can't go on like this. As I lay in bed, thoughts swirling, I make a silent promise to myself. Change is coming, and I'll be the one to usher it in. The weeks following our unresolved discussion about the house and Ryan's family financial support were like walking on a tightrope. The air in our home grew thick with unspoken words and mounting frustrations. One evening, I came home to find Ryan on a call, laughing carefree. My day had been a series of endless meetings and deadlines. Natalie clung to my leg, seeking attention after a long day apart. Ryan, can you take Natalie for a bit? I asked, hoping for a moment to breathe. Yeah, just give me a minute, he replied, not taking his eyes off his phone. Minutes turned to an hour, and I found myself handling dinner and Natalie's bedtime routine alone, again. It was the same old story. That night, after Natalie was asleep, I decided it was time to address the elephant in the room. We need to talk about your family's financial dependency, Ryan. It's affecting our marriage, our plans for the future. Ryan sighed, a sign that he was tired of this conversation. We've been over this, Kathy. I can't just stop helping them. I'm not asking you to abandon them, but our priority should be our family, our daughter. We're sacrificing her future for this. They're my family too, Kathy. How can you be so cold? It's not about being cold. It's about being realistic. We can't build a new house and continue supporting them at this level. The argument escalated, voices raised in frustration. Fine, Kathy. If you're so set on this, I'll tell them. But I hope you can live with yourself, knowing you're the reason they're struggling. I stood my ground, despite the guilt Ryan tried to thrust upon me. It's not just on me, Ryan. This is a decision we should make together, as partners. Sleep didn't come easy that night. The divide between us felt wider than ever. The next morning, as I dropped Natalie off at daycare, the weight of our argument sat heavily on my shoulders. I wondered how many more mornings like this I could endure. At work, my mind kept drifting back to our argument. I knew Ryan felt caught between his duty to his family and his responsibilities to us. But where did that leave Natalie and me? 
Days passed, and Ryan's demeanor towards me grew colder. Conversations were limited to necessities, and the laughter that once filled our home seemed like a distant memory. Mommy, why is Daddy mad? Natalie's innocent question one evening caught me off guard. He's not mad, sweetie. We're just... figuring some things out. But in my heart, I knew we were doing anything but figuring things out. We were stuck, trapped in a cycle of arguments and silent treatments. The tension in our home wasn't just affecting Ryan and me anymore. Natalie could feel it too. I knew something had to give. And soon. I started to spend more evenings in my home office, going over our finances, looking for ways to make the new house a reality without compromising our present. But deep down, I knew it was more than just numbers on a spreadsheet. The brewing storm in our marriage wasn't just about money or family obligations. It was about respect, partnership, and understanding each other's perspectives. And right now, those were in short supply. As I lay in bed each night, listening to Ryan's distant breathing, I couldn't help but wonder if our marriage, once filled with dreams and love, could weather this storm. Or if, like so many others, it would succumb to the pressures of life, leaving nothing but memories and what-ifs. Returning early from a business trip always seemed like a sweet surprise in movies. But life isn't a movie. That day, it hit me like a storm. Stepping into the house, the silence was unsettling. Natalie was at my sister's, and I expected Ryan to be, well, just being Ryan. But this was different. As I moved silently through the house, the sound of laughter, not familiar, not mine or Natalie's, stopped me cold. There, in our living room, was Ryan, with someone I'd never seen before. They were close, too close. My heart raced, not with exertion, but betrayal. What the? Ryan? The surprise on his face would have been comical if it weren't so tragic. Kathy, what? How? The woman beside him, caught like a deer in headlights, grabbed her things and scurried out without a word. There I stood, facing the man I married, now a stranger. Why, Ryan? Why her? Why us? Why this? It's not what it looks like, Kathy. You're misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? The nerve of him. My hands trembled, but not from fear. I was angry, more angry than I'd ever been. But I needed to be smart. I needed evidence. You're overreacting, Kathy. She's just a friend. A friend? In our house like this? You expect me to believe that? He didn't have a good answer. He never did. But I had enough. Enough of the lies, the disrespect, the betrayal. It was time to act. I left the house that night. Not because I was defeated, but because I needed space to think, to plan. Natalie was safe with my sister, and I needed to be strong for her. The next day I visited a lawyer. Divorce was a word that tasted bitter, but necessary. I showed him the pictures, the proof of Ryan's infidelity. You're sure about this, Mrs. Davis? The lawyer asked, his voice neutral, yet understanding. More than I've ever been about anything, I replied firmly. Ryan thought I'd never go through with it. He signed the papers thinking it was a bluff, a scare tactic. He didn't know me as well as he thought. When I filed those papers, it wasn't just an end to our marriage. It was a declaration of my strength, my refusal to be disrespected and discarded. That night, as I lay in bed, a single thought echoed in my mind. You can break my heart, Ryan, but you'll never break my spirit. This isn't just an ending. It's a beginning. My beginning. The fallout of the divorce was like watching a house of cards collapse. It was quick, merciless, and left nothing standing in its wake. The day Ryan received the divorce papers was a day I'll never forget. He was stunned, almost comical in his disbelief. You're serious about this? As serious as I've ever been about anything, I said, my voice steady. The legal battle over the house was intense. Ryan wanted to keep it, a symbol of a life he thought he could just walk back into. But I fought hard, for Natalie, for me, for the life we deserved. The courtroom was cold, sterile and filled with the sound of legal jargon. But when the judge granted me full ownership of the house, it felt warmer than any place I'd ever been. Victory wasn't sweet. It was necessary. Meanwhile, Ryan's world crumbled. The woman he'd been with, she left him as quickly as she'd appeared. Turned out, she wasn't interested in a man who had nothing to offer. And financially, 
Without my income, Ryan struggled. It was a sharp fall from the comfortable life he'd taken for granted. But the real blow came when Ryan's family learned about the divorce. They had been making plans. Plans that involved moving into the new house with us. A house that was no longer ours. The shock, the anger in their voices when they called me. It was almost too much. You can't do this to us, Kathy. We were supposed to be a family. You were never my family. You were just passengers in a life that Ryan and I built. And now, that life is over. Ryan ended up moving in with his mother and sister. Their once comfortable lifestyle, supported by our income, was now confined to a cramped apartment. I heard about their struggles, the arguments, the bitterness. But it was no longer my circus, no longer my monkeys. I'd lie if I said I didn't feel a pang of sadness for Ryan. Once upon a time, he was my everything. But that time was gone, lost to choices he made, choices that cost him everything. In my new life, in my house, I found peace. Not the kind that comes from victory over someone else, but the kind that comes from knowing you've done the right thing, for yourself, for your child. As I watched Natalie play in our new backyard, her laughter a balm to my weary soul, I knew this battle, though harsh, was worth it. We were free, truly free, for the first time in a long time. Starting anew wasn't just about changing the locks or painting the walls. It was about rebuilding, inside and out. Natalie and I, in our house, were creating a life of our own, one filled with laughter, strength, and independence. Our days took on a new rhythm, one that was entirely ours. Mornings were no longer rushed, but filled with shared breakfasts and stories. Natalie thrived, blossoming into a happy, confident child, her laughter a constant melody in our home. But life, as always, had its surprises. One of those was Ryan, appearing one day at our doorstep, looking worn and defeated. Kathy, I've been thinking. We made a mistake. We can fix this, for Natalie. His words, once capable of swaying me, now fell flat. I looked at him, really looked at him, and saw a man I no longer recognized. Not because he'd changed, but because I had. Ryan, there's nothing left to fix. We're past that. But Kathy, I've changed. I know I've made mistakes, but I'm better now. For you, for Natalie. The temptation to fall back into old patterns was there, a familiar pull, but stronger still was the memory of nights spent in tears, of promises broken, of a trust shattered beyond repair. No, Ryan, we've moved on. Natalie and I were happy. And your being here, it's not going to change that. He tried to argue, his words a mix of pleas and promises, but they were just words, and words were no longer enough. Please, Kathy, I need this, I need you. You needed us before, and you made your choice. Now, I'm making mine. Goodbye, Ryan. Closing the door on Ryan was like turning the last page of a long, tumultuous chapter. It was an ending, yes. But more importantly, it was a beginning. Natalie and I didn't just survive. We thrived. We filled our home with love, with hope, with dreams of the future. Looking back, I realized that every tear, every heartache, every moment of doubt led me to where I was meant to be, in a home filled with love, in a life filled with purpose. I want to say to anyone listening, anyone who's ever felt lost, alone, or afraid, you're stronger than you think. You have the power to change your story, to close one chapter, and start a new one. Has there ever been a time when you had to make a tough decision for your own well-being, even though it was difficult? Like Kathy's choice to end her marriage and build a new life, have you ever had to choose between what's familiar and what's right for you? Share your stories in the comments below. Your experiences could inspire someone else facing a similar crossroad. And if you enjoyed Kathy's journey and our storytelling, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to our channel for more empowering stories. Your support helps us continue sharing tales that resonate and uplift. Thank you for watching.